everybody and welcome to another board game discussion video. Today is going to be another one where I dive deep into a topic that I've mentioned briefly before. In this case I'm going to be talking about the transition between analog board games, digital board games, video games, and everything in between. It's a really interesting topic that has particularly come about in the last like half decade or so. It's become like really really big. I've talked about this very briefly when I've done a couple of my top five videos where I talked about digitally enhanced board games and some other stuff along those lines, but today I'm really going to go into the pros and cons for this particular transition. Before I get started though, please make sure, if you haven't done so already, take a look at my Facebook and my Twitter pages. On both of those I post my new videos as well as when I'm going to be streaming and all that kind of stuff. Plus you can interact directly with me, send me messages and everything like that. So it would be great to hear from you. In addition, as always, please put any and all thoughts and comments that you have into the comments for this video because this topic particularly is one that I'm really interested in because I grew up on video games rather than board games, so it's interesting to hear other people's perspectives on this. That said, the way that I'm going to do this video is I'm going to split these games into three different categories. First, I'm going to talk about games that are enhanced by technology in some way. That is to say, they've got an, a companion app, or they've got some other type of mechanism that allows them to become easier for the players, whether it's keeping track of numbers or rounds or whatever it happens to be. The next thing that I'm going to be discussing are video games that are made to look like a board game. Um, there are several of those, and it's kind of an interesting transition. Last but not least, I'm going to be talking about board games that have completely made the transition into a video game. And again, going over sort of the pros and cons for each one. So to get us started, we're going to be talking about board games that are enhanced by some kind of technological aspect. Now this is what I really did my video on. I did a top five for exactly this, so I won't talk too, too much about it, but I will give you guys a couple of highlights. First and foremost, my favorite game of this category, XCOM. In this particular game, this is based off of the video game XCOM and, and XCOM Enemy Unknown, sorry, and in this you have a companion app. You run it off of a tablet, smartphone, something along those lines, and that gives you the scenario for the game, the difficulty, and it also gives you a bunch of random events, random occurrences, attacks, the budget, all of that kind of stuff. The really great thing for this, and the reason why I love the companion app so much, is it makes the game expandable without you having to buy a bunch of extra stuff. There's a lot of potential for adding in additional scenarios or new alien types and those kinds of things without really changing what's physically inside of the box. And that's great. I love it. This is a really good example of a fun co-op game that is really opting the technology very, very well. Because again, we're talking about random events, so we've got a lot of replayability just from that. And on top of that, it's just a well-designed, relatively streamlined game. So it's a lot, lot of fun. Another great example of this sort of streamlining app companion thing that I personally really enjoy is Werewolf One Night. Um, there are several games that do similar things to this where you've got your hidden roles and you're trying to figure out who the bad guys are, whatever it happens to be, and a lot of them now have apps because you have these big giant long scripts that you have to read out for who does what, when they do it, all that kind of stuff. And having a person sit there and read it becomes not only tedious but difficult for whoever has to read it because you practically have to have a completely separate moderator which is what Werewolf One Night was trying to get rid of from the original Ultimate Werewolf. And again, I like that. I like this app enhancement type of thing for board games or card games or whatever it happens to be. In addition, for Werewolf One Night specifically, they just finished up the Kickstarter not too, too long ago for One Night Alien. And with One Night Alien, one of the cool things is that it actually has random abilities for the alien roles, which is kind of neat. And so you get to do slightly different things. Again, improving replayability, plus you've got cross-compatibility with One Night Werewolf, One Night Vampire, and One Night Alien. So you can mix and match and do all that kind of stuff. And again, the app keeps track for you. Tremendously helpful. 
Just as a couple of other little notes in this same category, uh, we've got things like Arkham Horror, where you've got all of those location cards, massive, massive number of cards, including the Outer, outer Worlds, all of that tracked in the, I believe it's actually called the Arkham Companion app. And so you just say, I am in this location, bam, you draw your Mythos card or your Encounter card as appropriate, and you also keep track of those Mythos cards. Great, tremendously helpful. Now, for some people, they don't really like that. They want to have the physical cards, they want to have the feeling, all that kind of stuff. And I am in that camp sometimes. With a game particularly as big as Arkham Horror, it can really be helpful to have an app that helps you out with that kind of stuff. Same thing, there's one for Sheriff of Nottingham that keeps track of round timers and it also allows you to do scoring at the end of the game. Meh. I I personally don't find that necessary. Uh, another great one that I use fairly frequently is Mage Knight. Mage Knight has an AI for the solo version of the game. Again, that's really how I love playing it. And it's not really that fancy, but it gets the job done. Um, another good example from uh, relatively while ago is this guy right here, Space Alert. Space Alert is one that utilizes a CD that randomly essentially skips to a different track to do something similar to what XCOM does. Now, in general, for this category, this is the type of thing I love to see with board games. We still have the physical game, we're still all at the table together, messing around, playing this game, and we have an app or whatever it is telling us what's going on, what we have to do, where we need to go. Perfect, awesome, great. On top of that, it makes these uh, the cooperative games especially a lot more fun. And again, that's what I really love to see. Now, moving right along to the next category. Video games that look like board games. There are a couple that I wanted to mention. The first one is Armello. Now, don't get me wrong. For both, for both of the main games I'm going to talk about, I love them. I really, really enjoyed Armello. I was surprised by how much I loved it because I was just like, wow, this is a really, really well done game. Effectively, you are trying to cure the king or kill the king and like just all sorts of different stuff. And you're gathering up cards, you're rolling dice, you're moving on hexes, all this kind of thing. My biggest issue with these types of things is you make it look like a board game, you make it feel like a board game, all this kind of thing, why don't you just make a board game? Like, it just makes more sense in my opinion. Now, don't get me wrong, you do have the solo play in addition to the multiplayer and all this kind of stuff, which is great. On top of that, you've got the sort of AI opponents that are like the neutral parties and that kind of thing that move around as they move. But again, at the same time, why make something that is so clearly board game inspired and board game like when you could just make a board game out of it. And it just, it seems odd to me personally, but I guess I'm just kind of weird like that. Again, I absolutely love Armello and I think it's a great game, but I don't believe that it was necessary to have it as a video game. On the other hand, we've got Civilization. Civilization obviously is also a board game. It is an actual printed analog board game, but the thing is the sheer complexity of the video game version was such that it couldn't all be compressed into a board game. And in that case, I say, let's get the video game. You know, because again, there is so much going on that it's not possible for it to fit into a board game. Think about something like Twilight Imperium 3. That is something that could be made into a video game and would do quite well as a video game, I would imagine. But at the same time, it's tough to imagine something like as the Civilization, which is even bigger in scope than Twilight Imperium 3, to try to be compressed into an analog board game. Again, I enjoy both of them. They do have their place. I think that it makes sense to some extent, but if it's something that's a little bit more simplistic, I'm just like, why not make the analog one? It just, it seems to make more sense to me personally, but again, it's probably about a money thing. It's a money thing for the companies. I totally understand that. So I'm sort of lukewarm on this particular category. Last but certainly not least are the video games that have gone to the light side or reverse that. Essentially it's board games that have become video games. And the thing is, this is probably the biggest trend in the last couple of years with analog to digital. And we've had this in several ways. We've had things like Vassal and uh, Tabletop Online, Board Game Table Online, some, some things along those lines. We've even had things like the Dominion Deck Builder where you just go in and it tells you what cards to use for a game. You put in like these are all the 
Dominion expansions I have, and it's like, brrr, use these cards, that type of thing. And tools like that, I don't really mind. But when you're talking about fully playing a game completely online or digitally when it was originally a board game, I'm kind of like, why? Why are you doing that? There are several great examples of these. One really major one is Twilight Struggle. Twilight Struggle is huge, don't get me wrong. It's an endeavor to play the stupid thing, but if you manage to find somebody with whom to play it, it is amazing and it is so much fun. Now granted, somebody moves away, you can't play in person anymore, so you play online. Okay, fine. But then you've got other things like Puerto Rico. You've got things like, again, like Dominion, Cosmic Encounter. A lot of these games really seem unnecessary to digitize. On top of that, in my opinion, again, this is all very opinionated for me, the worst couple of bad guys, so to speak, in this particular area are two major companies I wanted to talk about. The first one are the guys who make Small World. Days of Wonder. Days of Wonder also made Ticket to Ride, which is another one that was completely digitized. What are we talking about? We are talking about apps. These are games that are available in app stores. They're available on Steam, all of this kind of stuff. You pay like two, three, five dollars, whatever it is, and then you can play Small World. You can play Ticket to Ride. You can play all these kinds of games. And don't get me wrong, they're great games, and that's why they were made into apps. But why? Why are you making these games into apps? Play the game. That's what it's here for. It is a physical, analog game. That's what it was designed as. Why not keep it like that? Again, it's 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 a money grab, and that that's really the way I feel about it. And it's it's unfortunate. I don't like seeing that. I don't want these companies to just be trying to grab all the money and stuff. It's just it it's really really unfortunate for me. The other major company that I wanted to mention for this is these guys, the ones who made Splendor. Technically the distributors for this game, which is Asmodee. Asmodee has taken a lot of their games and turned them into apps of various sorts, Splendor being one of the most popular, both digitally and analog. And again, I, I mean, for Splendor, it at least makes a little bit more sense because this box is ridiculous, as I've discussed on some of my other videos. But at the same time, you have a board game. It has literally two components, board, game, board, game. You are taking away half of what makes a board game a board game. You are digitizing the entire the experience. Why are we doing that? Why are we digitizing an experience? It doesn't make sense. That is one of the whole points of the board game niche, is that you go out, you physically meet people, you physically sit down, see them, talk, and then you play the game on the table. That is literally half of the point. Because board game, board game. Yes, you can sit in the living room and you can play Super Smash Brothers and you can play Rock Band and all these kinds of things too. But if you're going to take a board game and digitize it, why? Why are you taking that away? I mean, is it just so that people can get a solo experience? I mean, okay, I guess, but... But, like, does that mean that they just want to practice so that when they go and they face off against their friends, they'll be better at it? Is it because, like, they don't have any people to play with? Because that would just be sad, and that's what meetup and things like that are for. That's how I met my gaming groups. Like, you got to go on these sites and you got to find other people, and that's the entire point. We need to try and go and get out and meet and do things and all this kind of stuff. And seeing these board games become digitized and just become another app in an app store just it it bothers me in a way that it really shouldn't honestly but for for some reason it just really gets under my skin and i think it's just again because mostly it's been really really bad in the sense of we've had a lot more of them in the last few years. Uh, but one really good example that went the other direction, we had Play Incorporated that started off as an app and was very, very successful and recently became a board game. And it's a pretty decent board game, honestly, but at the same time, like, that's even more confusing because you're talking about a lot of production costs and actually making and designing and developing a board game. That's pretty impressive. You know, like doing everything with the app is slightly easier, honestly. But 
That said, this, this category by far is the, the part of this video that really makes me the most upset, clearly, in case you couldn't tell, just because it's, it's something that I, I find takes away the magic and the point of a board game. And it's really disappointing for me. I, to an extent, I can understand the appeal, I really do, but at the same time, the entire appeal of a board game is that you physically hold something and you're touching it and you're doing things. And a lot of times I'll sit down and I'll play games with people and they'll be like, oh, you know, like I forgot to draw this card or I forgot to move this piece or whatever because I'm used to playing online and the game does that for me. And I'm just like, no, the game doesn't do it for you. The program does it for you because that's how it's designed, but this is not a video game. This is a board game. This is interaction and remember and all this kind of stuff. But I'm going to stop rambling about it right now. Suffice to say, three major categories. First category, those board games that are somehow digitally enhanced. That is to say they have a companion app, a CD, whatever it happens to be. Awesome. Helpful. Fun. Great. Right? Things like uh, One Night, Werewolf, things like Alchemists, things like XCOM Enemy Unknown. Great ideas. Makes for a lot of versatility in a board game. Second thing, video games that work like board games. I'm okay with them, I guess. I mean, there, there are honestly some really great ones out there that I greatly enjoy, but why? Why, why do it if you can do it as a board game? I mean, if you have a video that's overly complex, then leave it as a video game. But if you have a video game that's not, not as complex, make it into a board game. It'd be awesome. It's fun. Last but certainly not least, board games that have been turned into video games slash apps. Why? I just, I can't see any reason other than it's a way to make more money. And don't get me wrong, that is a very tempting reason, I'm sure. But why? Why do it? So, with that, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know that I, for one, as always, enjoy making them for you. As always, please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What do you think of this category? What do you think of my opinions on the different, uh, the different sort of categories that I split it into? Do you have any other things that you want to talk about? Anything and everything in the comments below. And once again, as a reminder, please, if you haven't done so already, check out my Facebook and my Twitter. I would love to have you guys on those and to have even more discussions through the social media channels. But with that, thank you very, very much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.